Give me one second, guys. Just had us. I guess somebody, of course, trying to call me at the start of the stream. Hang on. This is a cluster clock. But we're finally beginning spring game football. Welcome back, guys. Sorry for the delayed start here. We're already underway in Columbus for the spring game. Unfortunately, had some personal shit that I needed to take care of. I'm going to get the uh, scoreboard up now. And we're going to begin. Cynical, good to see you, buddy. Uh, uh, Akbar, I saw you earlier, man. Good to see you again. Uh, been a minute since we've done a stream, um, but this is the first official college football live stream we've done since the Senior Bowl, so that's cool. But as you can see, we're kind of uh, kind of uh, flying by the seat of our pants here. It's a little bit of a clusterfuck. Basically, I've had to uh, take care of some personal stuff this morning, uh, seeing off my kids and doing a bunch of other stuff, but basically... Uh, yeah, this is really what we're doing today. So we are doing the Ohio State spring game. Um, here's the thing, guys. I didn't quite get the rule book, but Gray is already leading 5 nothing or 6 nothing. I'm sorry. So uh, keep in mind, okay, this is the scrimmage, okay? And spring football, um, yes, true, big damnation on big blue. Um, uh, <laughs> I support this full heartedly. Um, a couple of things here. Spring football doesn't work the same as normal football. We basically got a, uh, a bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, I guess when the defense makes a critical stop at a certain point, they get some points. Obviously when the offense makes a critical stop, they get some points. So we're kind of flying by the seat of our, our pants here. Uh, I'll be a little more prepared next weekend for whatever we whatever game we end up calling. Uh, I put that to a vote to uh, see what game we call. Uh, it's coming down to, I think, probably going to be between Michigan and Texas. But that is uh, to be determined all around. So we'll see what happens there. In the meantime, guys, we got the Scarlet team on offense. Um we are the, the scrimmages are pretty much no touch to the quarterback. Uh, they're wearing the black shirts regardless. Scarlet and Gray are the two sides here. Uh, let me take a look. Okay, and uh, I, you know we're kind of just uh, flying by the seat of our pants again here on this one. I didn't get the rule book before this started, but <coughs> here we go. Uh, we got a pass on the Scarlet team here. I'm trying to see who the quarterback is. Number 33. God, who was that again? 
Uh, that was... Oh, God, I'm awful today. This is going to be a clusterfuck of a stream. Uh, that was Brown at quarterback for Ohio State. And then, um, so here we go. We're driving. We're already six minutes left in the first quarter. It's a running clock at 12 minutes apiece for the spring game. Snap, looking to throw. It's Brown. Brown keeps looking. He's going to scramble, and they're going to call him down around the 45-yard line. It's going to be second down for the Scarlet. We are drinking. <laughs> And then, um, oh, Will Howard is uh, also playing today as well. He's the Kansas State transfer coming in. The quarterbacks for Ohio State today will be Will Howard, Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, Julian Sayan, and Air Nolan. So we are going. I know, I know, Akbar, YouTube TV fucking sucks. I'm trying to stay ahead of everybody else. Pass going to throw from uh, Brown, completed. And that's going to be a first down completed to Tate, number 17 for Ohio State. So, just tuned in. Is Saiyan playing? Yes, he is expected to play. All right, Brown looking to throw. Again, caught. Uh, that pass was completed by Igbuka. Devin Brown, he's uh, two for two now on throws in this uh game here in this scrimmage pretty full house at ohio stadium today looks like it's about three quarters full at the old horseshoe um you got interviews going on on the field during the scrimmage obviously and it's all just trying to get a feel of what everything is going to be looking like for ohio state going into the next season handoff by the scarlet team uh they're going to take that up the middle and it'll be a game of about four yards so looking at second down here for the scarlet side um, trying to get these player names as we go through the game. Um, this is also kind of a test for me because when we get to the college football season, we're going to be doing live streams uh, pretty much every weekend uh, during the college football season. Uh, the UFL games have also been helping out with that. By the way, UFL stream tomorrow, we're going to be doing Battle Hawks versus Brahmas at 5, or I'm sorry, at 3 o'clock. So 3 o'clock Eastern, be sure to tune in for that. Snap by Brown, looking to throw. He's looking for the end zone, underthrown, incomplete, intended for Tate. Devin Brown, he got a little bit of playing time during the Cotton Bowl against Mizzou, and then Keenholz came in later in the game after he got injured, if I recall correctly. And the other unique thing about spring football is that once this game is over, players are going to break, and there's no more big practices going on through the remainder of spring. They'll hold a quick summer camp, I think, during the offseason. But this is pretty much uh, the last big uh, football thing for Ohio State until fall camp. All right, Brown looking to throw again. Snap. Uh, scrambling to the outside. Intended target. You can wait to see the name, number nine. And uh, incomplete. It's going to be fourth down for Team Scarlet. And it looks like they're going to try a field goal. It looks like. Got about three and a half to go in the first quarter of this spring game. A couple of stats being shown by Fox right now. Uh, ranked first, second, and third in touchdowns and pass yards a game, points per game, and then there was one more stat, but I'm not sure. Scarlett's going to kick a field goal here, 32-yard attempt. Looking to go right down the pipe. Snap good, holds up, kick is up, and it is good. A little windy in Columbus today, but we got that kick up. And that is a field goal for the Scarlet team. So. There you go. A quick adjustment of the camera during that. So that's pretty convenient. So uh, about three and a half to go in the first. It is uh, six to three Scarlet over Gray. I just realized this is white. There we go. Scarlet over Gray right now. Three and a half to go. And Gray will take over the possession on the ball. So, if you guys have any comments, or is uh, Devin Brown still wearing 33 or whatever? It hurt my eyes seeing a quarterback in that number. Yeah, that's really fucking weird, isn't it? Kind of brings back, like, Otto Graham vibes. Because if you ever heard of Otto Graham, he was a quarterback for the Cleveland Browns back in the 40s and 50s. And I think he wore, like, uh, some crazy number in the 90s or whatever it was. 
And then when the NFL standardized uniform numbers, you could tell in the jersey, I think they had the jersey in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, where they actually had the stitching around the old numbers, and then they just plopped the quarterback number on the back of it. And I think they retired, ended up retiring both numbers. So if you're a Browns fan in the chat, let me know if, uh, what, what this number was, but I can't remember it off the top of my head at this particular moment. Each team gets three timeouts per half in the spring game as well, and eight quarters are about 12 minutes. And it looks like we're going to have a kickoff. Now, college has not adopted it, the NFL-XFL hybrid model, so they're still doing standard kickoffs. And it looks like, yeah, the wind is really blowing hard in Columbus today, so we're going to have uh, a placeholder for the kickoff here. Cheers, guys. Going with the Angry Orchard today. Nice, clean drink. Think Doug Flutie won 22 in college or CFL? I forget. I don't think Flutie wore 22 in college. I think he wore a different number in college, but I wouldn't surprise me if he wore that in CFL. <clears throat> Once again, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask. Another unique thing with Ohio State going into this uh, <laughs> going into this fucking spring game, Chip Kelly is their offensive coordinator, and I. Fucking hate that son of a bitch. Uh, trick played Chip Kelly. God, I mean, don't get me wrong. He was really good ten years ago. That was ten years ago. Actually, it wasn't even ten years ago. It was fifteen years ago. He wore number twenty-two at Boston College. Thank you, Cynical. Appreciate that. All right, we got Gray on the field now. Snap, looking to throw, pass underneath, and it's caught. And the target is uh, number twenty-eight for Ohio State. Trying to get the name in front of me here. I don't see the damn name. Well, number 28 for Ohio State catches the ball. And who is that in at quarterback? Is that Keenholz? That's Julian Sayan in at quarterback. Freshman Julian Sayan in at quarterback for Ohio State. So there you go, Chelsea Grin. Sayan is in the game. Freshman quarterback Julian Sayan. See what happens here. Snap, looking to throw is Sayan. Completed, but it's behind the line of scrimmage. Target's going to be brought down. For a loss, going to be second down and a good chunk here for the gray side. How goes the college football playoff then? Well, considering that I'm just now fully over my illness, we're slowly trying to get more and more voiceovers in there. Um, so it's coming along. I'm only a few minutes in. Like only a few minutes of the video is fully complete. So if I had to give a percentage of how done it is. I would say it's maybe two percent done. As uh, Saiyan does a little scramble up the gut and uh, picks up a handful of yards, going to be third down. Red is is in his uh, college football video game arc. Just call random human by number. There you go. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we're not going to have that problem in the new NCAA football game coming up. But uh, yeah, literally in the old games, it would just be. Quarterback number nine, really a great player. Quarterback number nine made his parents proud. Saying looking to throw, and he's going to be sacked. Well, figuratively, they're not doing full tackle, but he's going to be sacked for a loss, and it's going to bring up fourth down for the Grays, and there you go. Uh, yeah, Chelsea, the, the point of this scrimmage is just to get some solid work in. It's not to uh, kill anybody. So there you go. And uh, for the efforts on the drive, they're going to award the Grays two points. So it's eight to three for the Gray. And Scarlet's going to take over possession now with about a minute, minute to go in the first quarter here. Um, yeah, it's all basically touch as much as you can. And it's uh, going to be a punt away. Going to get some punt teamwork here. And that ball will die. Ooh, that was a great punt. Guys inside the five. So, punters looking pretty good. Yeah, but no, they're not going to be going. This is like 90% speed, but you're not going to be hitting the quarterback. You're not trying to pull any dangerous shit. You are literally just getting good reps in a game environment for this one. So they're going to award another point to the Grays. Again, I don't know how the scoring system works for spring football for Ohio State. I really don't. It, it, it's confusing to me. So I'm just going to update the score, and whatever the fuck happens, happens. 
Will Howard is now in the game for Ohio State, and Team Scarlet will take over with just under a minute to go in the first quarter. They're deep in the end zone here. They're going to be backed up at the two-and-a-half yard line. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle. It's going to be brought down at about the eight-yard line. They'll call him dead. That was Henderson with the carry there for Ohio State. I know I'm an Ohio State fan, but sometimes these numbers just I, – I, I, it's going to be tough for me to remember. I need to get like a – I need to print out like an actual roster for these games when I call them in the uh, regular season so I don't look like a dipshit. We got 30 seconds to go. Looks like we're going to get another playoff here before the end of the first quarter. Apologies for the late start, guys. Had uh, some personal business to take care of. Snap, how we're looking to throw. Caught by number four. He'll be brought down at about the 15-yard line. And that was Smith with the reception. And play clock is dead. Let's see if they get one more playoff before end of the quarter. Eh, it doesn't look like it. All right, so that's the end of the first quarter. And the current score is going to be nine for the gray, three for the scarlet. And that'll take us to a break. And again, these are running clock. So it's going to be, um, you know, it's, these are going to be, this is going to be a pretty uh, quick stream compared to our normal. Normally, when we do these coverages for live games, we can go about three, three and a half hours, give or take. This is probably going to be about two, two and a half hour stream today. And then uh, we'll be back tomorrow with a with a live game with the UFL as the Brahmas take on the Battle Hawks in San Antonio. That's going to be a good one. Senegal with the draft cup coming. Which player do you think will do the best, and which one should have stayed another year in college? Ooh, that's a good one. Here's the thing: when it comes to the draft, it's yeah, the players matter, and uh, who is uh playing Matt and, and who you go who you draft matters it also depends on the team like if, it, if a player gets drafted to the Jets uh, their career is basically over if you go to the Panthers your career is basically over right <coughs> just ask just ask many the many failed quarterbacks that Jeffs have drafted over the years um I can say this like Caleb Williams is supposed to be this next generational talent and you don't really know if he's going to be a Peyton Manning or a Ryan Leaf until you get him on the field. Um, that said, obviously his eligibility ran out, so he was going to go drafted no matter what. I wish Marvin Harrison Jr. had stayed one more year at Ohio State just because of the fact that um, the teams that could possibly draft him really don't have good quarterbacks right now. So I could see a struggle there for Maserati Marv. But beyond that, I don't really have a good answer for you. And I only, I'm only saying that about Maserati because I'm also biased because fuck you for leaving Ohio State. Um, but that's a really good question. And I'm going to do a quick search on uh, mock draft boards real quick to see where everybody's going. So just bear with me a while I get that figured out. But, no, that was a really good question, Cynical, and I'll try to get you a little bit more detailed answer here shortly. So let's see here. Back from commercial, by the way, for uh, Ohio State spring game. As I attempt to educate myself a little better, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I mean, this this draft board is just fucking insane. I mean, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. and Romo Dunze from Washington going in the first round, more than likely. That's just fucking nuts. And they got Brock Bowers, tight end, going in number seven. Malik Neighbors, Drake May, Kayla Williams. God, that's a, that's a loaded class. I, I'll i tell you the one player that I feel like is going to have some struggles could be Drake May. Not because of uh, needing more seasoning. Or not. I just don't think he's going to be successful, personally. I mean, he didn't really – everyone was kind of hyping his ass up so damn much during the uh, season, but 
And maybe it's just because he played for North Carolina. North Carolina traditionally is just not a great football school. Uh, but I was not not impressed by Drake May. But I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong about this. But we'll see. All right, Will Howard's back on the field under center for Ohio State as we resume the spring game. Again, we are doing – they are doing different styles of score, scoring. So, if there's a touchdown, if there's a field goal, as that pass is complete over the middle to Ibuka, who is hammered at the 28-yard line for a first down for the Scarlet team. If there is anything at all that – uh, come if there's a football, if there's a touchdown, a field goal, interception, whatever, then I'll play a graphic. But if they just throw points up, I'll just copy the scoreboard and I'm not going to have an explanation for you. Sorry. All right, snap. Well, Howard's looking to throw, scrambling out of the pocket, and he will get it to off to Ibuka for a couple of yards, not much else. Maybe second down for the Scarlet side. Uh, May is the biggest nothing burger quarterback of all time. Each North Carolina was a mid afternoon nap for me. Jesus fucking Christ. That's a roast. <laughs> Gamma Ross, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by and saying hello. Second and eight for Ohio State at the 32 yard line. Snap, hand off up the middle. And uh, that's going to be brought down around the 38 yard line. And uh, going to be third and short, I believe, for Ohio State. They don't have the like the yellow line on the screen, so it's hard to say. Going to be third and two. We get a running clock, so they're only going to stop the clock on a few occasions for the spring game. Third and two. Will Howard in a shotgun set. Snap, handoff up the middle. And uh, that's a big run right there. He's going to break free all the way past the 45-yard line. That's Yudkins with the carry for Ohio State. Yudkins, Yudkins, I can't pronounce that correctly. If someone can tell me how to pronounce that in the chat, that'd be great. i got to keep the volume low to prevent copyright. Good to see Brian Hartline, co-offensive uh, coordinator for the wide receivers. Also a former Ohio State wide receiver from 2005 to 2008. He was one of my low-key favorite receivers back then. So really, really great player, and I think he's going to be even better coach. How's the turnout for the game? Uh, the horseshoe is a good three-quarters to four-fifths full. You can see some seats open in the very, very upper deck of the horseshoe, but it's about full. Snap. Uh, look at the throws. Will Howard caught, and uh, that's going to be brought down at the 41-yard line. Uh, for a second down, pretty good, tur pretty good turnout for Ohio State, but that's typical, right? Ohio State always has great turnout for this shit. Uh, I find it fitting Hartline ends his pro career in Cleveland and it never left Ohio State. I mean, absolutely, Hartline was clutch. You're goddamn right, he was clutch. Again, one of my favorite low brow, low key receivers Ohio State had back in the mid two thousands. Um, here we go, snap. Will Howard looking to throw again? Second and five. It's going to be caught by Henderson, and he's only going to get maybe a couple of yards, if any. So we are looking at third and oh – God. They were looking at about third and one. Hartline was underrated with the Dolphins. I would say so because I really don't remember what he did in his pro career, to be completely honest. Um, then again, when he was in his pro career, I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to where Ohio State players were going. So that's just how I operated back then. It'll be third and two for Ohio State. They're going to hand it off to Henderson up the middle. He's going to break free. He's at the 25, and he'll be brought down actually just before then. They'll call him dead at 30. And, again, a lot of these games, if you're watching this live on Fox, a lot of the time you're not going to have full-blown tackles. They want to protect these players, obviously. They don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, so it's a lot of two-hand touch and pads. But that's okay. It's still football. It's a, you know – about as legitimate of a college football game you're going to get from now until late August, which I'm cool with, man. I'm cool with this. First and 10 for Scarlett. Uh, you got three wide outs, shotgun set, and a man in motion. Howard fakes the handoff, scrambling in the pocket, throws it. One-handed catch by Abuka. Holy fucking shit. God damn. God fucking damn it. He just... 
fucking one-handed palm ball that thing out of the sky like OBJ. Jesus fucking Christ. Two feet in bounds, too. You only need one in college. That was a fucking strat. Oh, my Lord. That was a thing of beauty. Jesus. I need to get, like, a fucking graphic for that kind of shit when it happens. But that was incredible. Igbuka, four for 47 on receptions and yardage for today. Will Howard, nine for 10, 77 yards. First attempt for Ohio State at about the 14-yard line. Snap, Howard looking to throw. He does. Batted away by the corner incomplete. And uh, it looks like Will Howard is running with the ones. I believe Scarlett is the one offense. Gray is the one defense. I could be wrong. If you want to correct me in the comments, please do. Smith was the intended target there, but that corner, he just threw an arm out and just smacked that fucking ball away. Like, get the fuck out of here. That was a great play on defense. I got to get that dude's name. I don't have it in front of me. Number 24 for Ohio State was the corner there that bided the ball away. Second and 10 for Ohio State at the 14-yard line. They're in the red zone. Scarlet, I should say. Snap. Will Howard look at the throw. Through the hands of Smith. Incomplete. Great defense here in the red zone by the Grays. And going to be looking at third and nine with about 7.06 to go in the second quarter. Third and ten, pardon me. I was looking at the score. <laughs> oh, damn, I, I'm, I'm excited for this upcoming season, man. This is going to be great. We're going to stream Ohio State every Saturday. But if there's another primetime game that uh, we need to cover, we'll be covering it. I plan on doing that a lot. Third and 10 for Ohio State at the 14 for the Scarlet side. Snap, looking to throw. And overthrown slightly intended for Ibuka. That's a third. That's going to be fourth and 10. And let's see what they do here if they're going to bring up the kicking unit again for another field goal attempt. Not sure what they're doing quite yet. But Ibuka, he had a hand on it, but he just his feet slipped out from underneath of him, so he wasn't able to really get far. So that's a shame, but... He had a really great catch a couple plays earlier. And looks like they are going to line up for the field goal. 32-yard attempt again for the Scarlet. Let's see what happens here. Snap, good, hold, good. Kick is on the way, and it is good. So that will bring it to be uh, 9-6 as the Grays will now take over again. Pretty, pretty entertaining spring game we got going on here at the Horseshoe. Really, really entertaining. Once again, guys, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, bullshit, feel free to comment in the live chat. We'll, uh, we'll discuss it. And once again, Still working on part three of our next video. It's going to be basically a feature length film at this point. I, I can't give you a, a fucking timeline. There's been so many goddamn delays due to scripts, uh, due to outside influence and uh, illness that uh, I, I don't want to give you guys a, ba a bag of beans and tell you it's, you know, sand or gold. So it is what it is, man. Just uh, we will have part three of National Championship history out. I'm hopeful to have it out here in the next couple of weeks. That's the best you're going to get out of me. So, all right, here we go. First and 10 for the Scarlets. They're going to retain possession, actually. That's interesting. I don't know why. I guess they decided to go again. And uh, that's going to be a big run there for a first down. Let's see if they got in a quarterback at the moment. Didn't quite catch it. Good to see everybody here again. If you guys have any uh, comments or questions about the game, feel free to – uh, drop a message in the live chat, and we'll talk. Uh, interviewing fucking Chip Kelly now. You better not fuck up this offense, Chip Kelly. Snap, Scarlett's looking to throw. Haas is complete. They'll bring it out to the 50 where that dude is roughed up on the tackle. Got a couple of black stripes on the field for the defense right now, so this is probably your second uh, string, third string players out there at the moment. Second and five for the Scarlets. Let's see what happens here. Uh, I didn't. I uh, looks like it's Keen Holtz in at quarterback for the Scarlets. 
They're going to hand it off up the gut again. They're going to call him dead at the 48, so just past midfield for the Scarlets as we got about five and a half to go in the second quarter. And again, they're just kind of throwing points for the for a defense for a good stop and traditional touchdowns, field goals, and whatnots. Pass by Keenholtz, throws it just behind his intended target, incomplete. Gonna be second and ten here for Scarlet. Both sides still have all three timeouts. Um, let's see, it looks like the running back that they've been giving a lot of work is Peoples, number twenty for Ohio State. So let's see what we do here. Uh, five and a half to go. Second and ten. Ball is on the forty-three yard line for Scarlet. They're just past midfield. Snap. Good. Hold. Completed for the reception. And let's see where they mark the ball. It's going to be third and short for sure for Team Scarlet. Keenholtz three for four for eighteen yards so far on this drive. Third and four is what they're going to call it. Ball is on the 37-yard line. Snap good. Looking the hole. Looking the throw is Keenholtz. Intercepted. That is picked off. Poor throw by Keenholtz. And frankly, after watching his performance in the Cotton Ball, I'm not surprised. You want this ball? You want to take it from me. Take it from me, baby. It's mine. So that was picked off by the Grays. And I believe now they're going to get the ball. Scarlet scored a touchdown. Or they kicked a field goal a few minutes ago, I should say. Got the ball back. I guess they wanted to get their second string some work. And then Keenholz just throws it right to the goddamn corner. So, not great. We're just under five minutes to go in the second quarter now. They're going to get three points to Team Gray for that interception. And, again, this is a spring game, so two-hand touch. They got different scoring for different key plays in the game. So don't ask me a lot of questions, okay? Don't ask me a lot of goddamn questions. It looks like – oh, shit, hang on. What the hell? There we go. I just realized. It's 12-6. Great. Uh, Scarlett's going to retain possession despite the interception. They're going to give another quarterback some work now. Uh, handoff to the outside. Looks like Devin Brown's back in at quarterback for Scarlet. And they're going to run to the outside. Uh, that was Williams Dixon on the carry for Ohio State, number 24. And he's wearing one of them skull caps on top of the helmet to keep himself from getting a damn concussion. Those things are so goofy looking. It looks like you put a fucking cork or uh, you you uh, are cutting up a mango. You know how they cut a mango and they like dice it while it's still on the skin. You put that around your head. Those things are fucking weird looking, aren't they? All right, uh, second and six from the 32. Hand off to Williams Dixon again. He's going to gain a couple of yards, not too far, honestly. Got about four minutes to go in the second, so it's going to be third down. I'm going to say maybe three or four after the carry. Third and two, actually. Third and two. Gray side is absolutely playing pretty good right now. Uh, when Scarlett's out, I mean, Ibuka is a fucking star. He palm balls a fucking catcher a few minutes ago. That was great. And off again up the middle to Williams Dixon. He'll get to the first down from that. And as the clock continues to run down on the first half, got about three and a half to go now in the second. First and ten for the for the Scarlets. Let's see what they do here. Devin Brown on this possession, two for four for 16 yards per Fox. Kind of crazy how they have a national tele, telecast for a for fucking spring football. Isn't that nuts? Devin Brown looking to throw. He will run. He's found an alley. He's still going. They'll bring him down around the 50. That'll be about – that was the first down, it looks like. This is where they had issues during last season defending third and short. You're absolutely right. Third and short was kind of their Achilles heel last season. Very, very frustrating when that defense wasn't uh, – when that defense wasn't on par. It's really fucking pissed me off, frankly. First and 10 at the 50 for Scarlett. Devin Brown getting some work in right now. Snap, looking to throw. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man. It is caught for the first. Round about the 30-yard line. Trying to get the name of the receiver that caught the ball. 
he looks a little shaken up after that catch. But that was a great effort by that wide receiver. I think it was number 88. They're doing these interviews, too, and they're coming back and forth. So this is going to be the greatest angle to look at this shit. Got just over two minutes to go. Brown looking to throw. Snap. Tosses it to the uh, bottom of the screen. That is caught by number 34. Uh, Ship Schrader, I think the name was. There you go. First and 10 again for Team Scarlet coming up on two minutes to go in the second. No two minute warning. There's running it right through. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty quick game here because we're already going to be approaching uh, the uh, two minute. We're already approaching halftime here for uh, Team Scarlet. I got a lot more running in the background. If you hear it, sorry, not sorry. I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's from my house. Thanks to all 17 of you all watching this game. Snap. Brown looking to throw. He will toss it. Caught. Touchdown. Scarlet on a beautiful throw. Caught by number 34. That is Brennan Schram. That's his name. Schram. Yeah. Woo! Who can stop me? Tell me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah. Woo! That'll tie up the game. But the man and have to go. Uh, Schram just... Threading the needle from Devin Brown. Great throw. He's fighting for a job right now. Like, really, really trying to fight for a job. Snap is up. Kick is good. That'll be an extra point. Man. Replay of that touchdown pass. Catch by Stram. Uh, corner just never turned his head. Or the safety never turned his hand. He got beat over the middle. And uh, just... Threading it right there, right between the players. So, great throw there by Brown. You love to see that if you're a Buckeye fan. Really, really good catch by Shram there, too. Staying focused on the ball. So, uh, let's see who they're going to give possession to now for Scarlett. They just ran a bunch of offensive plays in a row. I'm assuming it's going to go back to Gray. But they haven't changed it over quite yet. 34 is classy. I agree. 34 is classy. Plus, he's got that California fucking hair. You see that guy's mop on his head? He's got a blonde mop on the top of his head. Looking like he just came out of the asshole of Surfer L.A. Like, Jesus Christ, it is a stunning sight. Julian Sayans back into the game for Ohio State. They're not even doing a kickoff here. They're just going to keep the ball with Scarlett. Uh, going to give the Scarlett side some more work. we got a minute and a half to go. Looks like they're going to do a little bit of a two-minute drill maybe. They're going to hand the ball up the middle. Uh, that is Peoples on the carry. Brought down for maybe a two-yard gain. No, we're not going to be doing a two-minute drill. At least not that much of a two-minute drill. Kind of a half-ass hurry-up, really. Second and eight. Ball is on the 43-yard line for the Scarlet. Pass caught by Peoples, and he'll be brought down out of bounds. They'll stop the clock at 1.11 to go. Uh, just short of the third down. Julian Salen, 6'1", 203, transfer from Alabama after Nick Saban retired. He could be something. He's only a freshman, too. He could be. This kid could be Ohio State's future. We could be looking at it. Hopefully, we don't lose him in the transfer portal next year. Third and one by Scarlett. They're going to hand the ball up up the middle, and that's going to be carried for about four yards by Peoples. And that'll be a first down with about a minute eight to go. And now we're going to go a little bit up tempo here. And we're going a little up tempo here. Snap, saying, looking to throw. It's a dump over the middle, off target, intended again for Peoples, incomplete. Second down for Scarlett. Saying up until that point was three for three on 22 yards in this drive. Now he's three for four. They lost their hands this drive, I agree. Second and ten here for Saying. Snap, looking to throw. Deep ball. That was just a bad throw. Intended for number nine up top, but he just way under threw that ball. I wouldn't call that bad hands. I call that just a bad pass. He is, the dude was wide open, had nothing but grass around him. He just needed to get to the ball. Just couldn't quite get there. We got about 59 seconds to go. Third and 10 here for Scarlett. As Saiyan trying to show his chops in a uh, two minute drill scenario, as we got right here for the scrimmage. Got four wide out set for Ohio State. Shotgun formation. Snap. Saying, looking to throw. He's going to chuck that son of a bitch deep. And that is picked off. 
Interception, and they're still running it back. They're going to keep him going all the way. He's going all the way. I don't know if they're going to count that. Are they going to count that? He got touched on the way. Oh, my Lord. Caught by the black stripe, number 18, McLean. They're not going to count that as a pick six, but that is definitely a pick. You want this ball? You want to take it from me. Take it from me, baby. It's mine. Look at the fucking black stripe on the team putting in work. The black stripes are guys that are not on scholarship. They're basically either they're not on scholarship, they're walk-ons, or they're still trying to earn a starting job. He might have just earned himself a fucking starting job come this fall. I don't know. But that was a great pick. And that is McCain, McLean. I'm trying to get the dude's name. That is McLean on the rece- on the interception there, number 18 for Ohio State. Playing the corner position. I mean, Stan threw the ball right to the bastard. I don't know what to tell you there. He threw that son of a bitch right at him. Oh, man, that was a great play. What a moment for McLean. Dude's trying to earn himself a job on the starting roster. You love to see that. Scarlett's going to retain possession here. 46 seconds to go now. And uh, with that rece- interception, that's going to get Net uh, Gray another two points. Don't ask me why. Just don't. We're You know, this is a scrimmage. There's not a lot going on. Uh, Cam Ross, I'll take a look at your comment here in a moment. So it's a pretty long one. Snap, look in the throw. Keen Holtz is back in that quarterback, by the way. Caught in a nice reception there by number 49 for Ohio State. Trying to get the dude's name as I go here. I haven't quite shown it yet. Keen Holtz is 5 for 7, 36 yards today in a pick. So not great. It looks like that goddamn dude looks like his last name is Brock or something like that. I don't know. Snap, Scarlett trying to finish this half strong. It's going to be caught by uh, Dixon, Williams Dixon, number 24, with the reception. Got about 24 seconds to go. That's a uh, stop the clock while they set the chains. And it looks like, <laughs> pardon me, it looks like uh, Day is uh, calling in the, uh, what is he doing? He's caught all the guys off the field, and they're going to call a timeout at the moment for Scarlett, it looks like so. So they're calling a timeout. So hypothetically, that would mean they're two left. Scarlett's had the ball pretty much the entire second quarter, though. McLean has definitely shown he belongs. That was a great pick by McLean. Maybe got a little team selfie afterwards. It was pretty sick. You wouldn't be able to do that shit in a normal game. That's the way to throw so many flags and make your fucking head spin. All right. Second and three. Ball is on the 28-yard line for Scarlett. Snap looking to throw as Keenholtz caught out of bounds. Catch was good. He was then ran out of bounds. Going to be first down for Scarlett as they're trying to get something going here to end the first half on a positive. Scarlett's thrown two picks in this first half. Uh, one thrown by Devin Brown, the other thrown by, I'm sorry, one thrown by Sayin, the other thrown by Devin Brown. You know, Keenholz has also thrown one too. A few picks. The only person that's played pretty well so far is Will Howard. Um, the other three definitely need some more seasoning, it looks like. So Will Howard clearly looks like he's QB1 going into the season right now. Snap, Keenholz looking to throw. It's going to be rushed out of the pocket. They're going to call him sacked. And they're going to have to call another timeout for Scarlett. So that's going to bring him down to one left for this half. Um, yeah, Keen Holtz just got ran out of the pocket there. And uh, they tagged him, so they're going to call him down. Remember, it's two-hand touch in spring football because obviously you don't want to get busted hurting your players on a fucking game that really doesn't mean anything. And with that sack, that's two more points for Gray, according to – the fucking scoring system that I have no idea how it works. <laughs> what are we going to do, guys? It's spring football. It doesn't matter towards a real thing. It doesn't matter. There's no records here that we're playing for. These are guys are just getting good reps and trying to get themselves ready for the upcoming fall season, seeing what they got, seeing what they still need to work on. There, You also got a couple – I mean, again, this is also like Julian saying, he looked pretty good, and he threw a pick there towards the end of that first drive, so – I don't really – he looks really good. He's also a freshman, so he's going to definitely need this upcoming season to really get himself kind of together. 
Hopefully they don't lose him in the transfer portal next season because this son of a bitch is like a wild west. Everyone's just going for a drop of fucking dime. They need to do something about that. So after the sack, it's second and 19 for Scarlett on the 30-yard line. Snap, looking to throw is Keenholtz. He will do so, and it's through the hands of his target incomplete. Number 83 was the intended target. Went right through the goddamn hands. God damn it. That's not good. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Yeah, catch that shit. 11 seconds to go. Mitchell was the intended target there for Ohio State. So are they going to run one more play and then maybe kick a field goal? Or are they going to kick a field goal now and just say, fuck it? They're going to kick a field goal. Really big field goal. 48 yards in this wind, which is swirling. Snap good. Kick is up. And that is to the left, no good. Oh, that's a shame. What? Are you, are you an idiot? So, kick is no good, and they're just going to call it a half. So, we are at the halftime here at the horseshoe after only an hour. Again, this is going to be a quick one because, obviously, they got a running clock going for 12-minute quarters for the spring game today. 17 to 13 for the Grays as uh, Ohio State just trying to get their shit together for the upcoming season. Um, so, <laughs> that was interesting to watch. I know we joined kind of late there, so that's on me, but that was pretty interesting to watch. All right, Cam Ross, I'm finally going to be able to check your comments. Let's see. We all saw in Super Bowl how important slash taken for granted point after touchdowns are. Then how they literally change the entire game from there. What this is why I hate when announcers do that shit. He's two thirty three for the last two thirty three. Fuck my life. You just jinxed us, and then bang off the uprights. You want to talk about it, Camros? <laughs> you okay, dude? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh, oh damn! I miss doing this. I want to get back to the weekly live streams that we do on here uh, every Wednesday, but we just have been having to devote more time to more shit, including trying to get the goddamn next video up and going. So, uh, so there you go. Um, well, we're going to have a little bit of an extended half here. I don't know how long it's going to go realistically, but why don't we take, take advantage of this and go over some of the latest college football news while we're at the half. So let me go ahead and pull this up. And if there's anything you guys want to bring up in, specific, in particular, definitely let me know in the uh, chat, and uh, we will we'll talk about it. But I really want to get I really want to go over some of the latest going on in college football at the moment. So obviously we got some other spring games going on today, but they don't matter towards the real record. So I'm not really going to get into it too bad. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm sure some of you guys were uh, aware of. This goddamn Super League proposal we have coming up for uh, college football. I mean, th this thing is just – I haven't had a moment to really take a look at uh, what we've had going on on that uh, on that department. But basically – and again, we're just – we're at the half right now, so we're just going to shoot the shit and talk a little bit about what's been going on recently in the world of college football. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the uh, article I just grabbed right here as uh, the best damn band in the land playing. Would love to play the shit. I can't. So again, we got the fucking Super League. But basically, if you haven't heard about this shit, the College Football Super League is uh, basically taking the top 80 teams in the nation, putting them into one giant-ass league based on a couple of different conferences or divisions or whatever, and having pro-rel. We don't know what that means. It means promotion or relegation. Uh, it's a thing that's been used in European soccer for a very long time. Um, and I think that... It could be a really good idea because at the same time, 
it's uh, a good I it's a good concept if you want to promote the idea of well if you want to be good you need to be at the top you need to stay good and you're not that good you're gonna fall off what I don't like is that the promotion and relegation is limited only to non power five teams so let me explain it like this in European soccer I know we're talking soccer now but in European soccer when you have a team in the top league of European soccer, which is, uh, let's say, Manchester City. I don't know what the current standings are. Let's say Man City or Manchester United. We'll go with Man U. Why not? Man U wins the league one year. They're at the top. Two years later, they go like, oh, for a lifetime, they lose all their games. That would mean that since they finished last, they would get demoted to the uh, English Championship League, which is one level below the Premier League in the English soccer hierarchy. Meanwhile, the champion of the English uh, Championship Leagues is taking their spot in the uh, list of teams. Now, Manchester United is the one of the fucking blue bloods of English soccer. But they're not immune from this relegation. If they, for some reason, end up getting to the bottom two or three teams, because it's not just one team, it's like two or three teams finish at the bottom, they all three get demoted. But if they uh, finish down in that bottom three, there's not an exception clause that forces them to stay in the English Premier League. They're going. I would want to see that. Like, no bullshit. If you're Alabama and all of a sudden after the heights of Nick Saban, you go 0-12, fuck you. You're out of the SEC. Sorry. The rules apply to all. Kind of sad it's all politics and money running into something unrecognizable to us college football fans soon. Ah, look, you at, if I were to pull aside a gentleman who's seven years old, been watching college football since he was 12 he would say this is not recognizable to what he grew up watching that's the one thing that we got to remember college football is always changing always evolving and we got to kind of evolve with it as fans it's not going to be the same game 10 years from now as it was 10 years ago 10 years ago it was a different game 10 years before that it was a different game 10 years from now it's going to be a different game it changes every single year Slowly but surely. Salty Wings and Ass Fan, yo! Yo. Um, but that said, I think that this system of having promotion and relegation, so if you want any teams to be in the upper echelon, fine. All 80 teams then should also be eligible to be demoted if they finish in the bottom three or four. Like if you're the third or fourth, like if you're the worst team in the 80, I don't care what conference you play for. I don't care if you're goddamn Vanderbilt. You're gone. If you're going to do it, make it equal for everybody. I don't care how good or how prestigious. I don't give a shit how good Ohio State is. If Ohio State goes 0-12 and, and we're deemed the worst fucking football team out of the 80 in this Super League, then we deserve to be relegated to the bottom, to the second level. And I would be totally understanding. I'd be more pissed off at Ohio State for allowing Chip Kelly to run it into the ground. But the problem with this concept, obviously, is it's not as simple as just throwing 80 teams into that side. It's um, going to be it's, it's going to be a struggle trying to figure out who these 80 teams are going to be. Obviously, your power four conferences all are probably going to get in, but then that's not 80 teams. You do quick math here. You got 18 in the Big Ten. You got about, uh, I want to say, about a, a, a 14, 16 in the SEC. You're going to get about half of the numbers of these teams in this 80 team style. The rest of it's going to be power five or a group of five. And so you're going to be. Throwing in guys from the American, from the Conference USA, 
your Sun Belts, your Mountain Wests, your Independents. I think it could work, but the only way it's really going to work is if you keep making it equal on all sides, personally. And Salty Wings, college sports is going to lose its amateurism. It already has. It's already lost its amateurism, man. The second that NIL became a thing, it's gone. Because these players can get play, paid now for their efforts. So we need to stop pretending that college football is all about players just playing for the love of the game. Yes, in your group of five FCS schools, Division Two, II, Division Three, they're all playing for the love of the game. And the majority of the players on your Power Four, it's going to take some time to get used to saying Power Four, in your Power Conferences, the majority of the players, they're all playing for the love of the game. Not every single player in college football on a Power Football team is getting paid. It's usually just your scholarship players. But we got to stop pretending that amateurism is really – something that we're going to expect in the future there's way too much fucking money involved in college football to even pretend amateurism is a thing anymore you can like it you can hate it but that's the future do you think we'll see cbas and bargaining agreements oh fuck yeah we'll see that soon the fact that dartmouth's college basketball team was allowed to unionize tells us there's going to be a college football players union that gains power there's currently a college football players association And the only reason why we don't hear about them is because they were trying to tell all these kids, no, don't agree to sign with the A-Sports. You're worth a lot more money. They're fucking delusional. They're they're fucking delusional. You know what I mean? If and the reason why I say that is because you don't tell a bunch of these, you don't tell twelve thousand football players or twelve hundred football players, however many football players there are in FBS, no, don't play, don't don't sign. Because you're worth more than six hundred dollars in a copy of the game, then what? Well, then what the fuck are they worth? I'm just saying, what the fuck are they worth? They don't get tens of thousands of dollars for EA Sports and the NFL. A couple of players do, but they're not guaranteed. Like, sure, Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, a bunch of other players, they probably get pretty good deals for going into their in the Madden games, but how many college football players do you know that are worth that much? None. They're college football players. They don't make that much in NIL deals. Why are you saying they need to be paying twenty five, fifty, hundred thousand dollars per player? That's just so unrealistic. It really is. They need to have a union. I, I want them to have a union. I think they need to have a collective bargaining agreement with the NCAA or with their conferences. And I think that'll ultimately be a good thing for the players to be able to have that in place. But that is so much red tape and so much political bullshit that we are years from having that going into place, I feel like. But who the fuck knows? It changes so quickly these days that we never really know what it's going to be looking like next week, let alone next year or next five years. I mean, shit, in two years, we're going to go from 12 to 14 fucking teams in the playoffs. I'm just saying. I don't mean to be on my soapbox rambling and ranting about the fucking future of college football. We haven't done this in a few weeks, and I'm actually fully better now. So I have all the energy in the world to say, who the fuck cares if the players are getting paid? Like, who the fuck cares? I don't. And the best thing you said right there, Salty, is you're right. NIL. And NCAA 25 were required in order to bring that college football franchise back. If it wasn't for NIL, we wouldn't have NCAA 25 at least the way that we want it to be. We could have had it, I feel like, if you uh, if you uh, really pushed on it. You could have had just as much generic players paid uh, uploaded, though. Probably would have suffered. But at the end of the day... I'm excited. And also, another thing before we do start the second half of this spring game, uh, we're launching EA Sports College Football 25. Rumor is that it's going to go July 19th. It's going to go live July 19th. So that means within the next month, we're probably going to see the official trailer. Now, it hasn't been confirmed by EA Sports. 
um, directly. Insiders have reported it. Numerous people have reported it. EA Sports hasn't officially announced it. But uh, I'm excited for that. And just hopefully, if everything goes the way I want it to go, we'll be doing some gameplay of uh, College Football 25 when it comes out. All right, so uh, kicker kicks the ball off to one guy in the end zone. Spring football. All right. I wonder what Notre Dame would do if College Football becomes a Super League. I do, too. Notre Dame is trying to keep up, but they are really behind the eight ball when it comes to uh, how they're going to approach it. It's going to be pretty much required here soon for Notre Dame to join a conference in order to compete. Uh, like, you can play the full slate of 12 games. You maybe even be able to get a Hawaii rule, play Hawaii every year so you can have a 13th game. But are you going to be able to handle that? I don't know. Scarlett's got the ball back, first and 10 for Ohio State. Uh, Scarlett's side, pass thrown by Julian Sayan, and it's going to be caught by, looks like it's uh, Caffey on the reception. But fuck up the names, I fuck up the names. So once again, for those of you just joining us and tuning in, this is uh, supposed to be non-contact, two-hand touch at the most. Uh, you'll see a tackle here and there as they're going to hand it off to the outside and uh, brought down for an actual tackle. Quarterbacks, two-hand touch, don't tackle them, don't hurt the quarterback. Um, the defense is going to be aw awarded some points if they get like an interception, if they get a sack, um, but they still have traditional touchdowns and field goals and we'll kind of keep up the score. I don't know what all the rules are scoring wise, but it's going to be a running clock. We're probably only going to be here for another hour and then they're going to wrap this son of a bitch up. Man in motion snap, saying looking to throw, ducks it underneath number nine for Ohio State and he'll be brought down at about the 49 yard line. If it's going to be second down for Team Scarlet. I wonder if Gray is going to get a lot more possessions here in the second half. Um, <coughs> a lot of the top offensive players are on the Scarlet side. That's why they get the ball a lot. Second and seven, saying looking to throw. He will. And it is almost intercepted again. Throws it behind his target, which was number nine for Ohio State on the scarlet side and he had two hands on the ball another black stripe trying to make a play there that was scott jr number five for gray and uh he just barely avoid he just barely misses the catch on that one Woo. third and seven saying looking to throw Chucks it deep, but it's behind the man, but he comes back around, almost catches it, but he drops it. Intended catch for Smith. Fourth down for Scarlett. That's a shame. Smith turned the ball, turned it around, was able to make a really great effort to try to catch a rather poorly thrown football, but just couldn't quite secure it. I'm grinding Dynasty in the Ultimate Team mode for NCAA. Oh, dude, same. We're going to be doing that here. I'm going to try to get an Elgato capture card or something like that and get the software in place to stream on Twitch and on here. Um, some gameplay of NCAA 25 when it comes out. I'm not going to be able to promise you I'll get that done, but we're going to try. They're going to flip sides here. Gray is still on defense. Now we got Keenold back in the game at quarterback because they're going to hand the ball up the middle to, uh, let me see here. I'm not sure who that was. Uh, Mags, uh, another quarterback. Okay. Looks like they ran like a wildcat or something like that. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry. I thought that was Keen. Who the fuck is the quarterback? Is that Keenholt or is that saying? I don't know. Well, whoever it is, snap, looking to throw. That's got to be Keenholtz. It is. And uh, intercepted? Is that intercepted again? Jones with the catch. Dear Lord. Wow. You want this ball? You want to take it from me. Take it from me, baby. It's mine. Wow. Uh, don't know what to say there. Keynote's just not doing good on that. I got to get this fucking thing off my screen. Hang on. I just realized we're no longer in halftime. I still say, let's shoot the shit. Yeah, damn it. All right. Oh, there you go. 
Jones with the interception there by Keenholz. That's Keenholz the second interception of the day. Not looking too good there, buddy. Need to say it. Yeah, I hope they do an early release too. I don't know if they will or not. Uh, probably not, to be honest. They need as much time as they can to cook this game up. And uh, they just uh, throw another three points out for the interception for the Grays. It's going to bring the score to 20. And Scarlett's going to keep possession here with another quarterback. Looks like that is going to be number 10. Who's number 10 for Ohio State? Is that Saiyan again? I think it's Saiyan. There you go. Dominant outing by the defense today. Hopefully the defense is just golly rather than the offense being ass. Uh, yeah, I'd say a good quarterback. Keenholds is not a great quarterback. Um, he really, really is undercooked. He needs a lot more time to get, get going as that pass is completed by Adolph, number 82 for Ohio State, by saying that's going to be a first and 10 for Scarlett. Um. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to judge because you, I don't I can't keep track of who the number one defense is at all times. But a lot of these throws by the Ohio State quarterbacks today have just been really really terrible throws, and that's where these interceptions keep going. It's another pass caught by Adolph, and they're going to keep the clock running. Second down. Um, I want to say it's because our defense is just godly, but some of these interceptions, man, have just been like right into the breadbasket of these defenders. Like McLean's interception was thrown right at him. Uh, Scott Jr. nearly picked it off. It was thrown right at him. Uh, number 32, who picked it off for Ohio State a few minutes ago, it was thrown right at him. And uh, Peoples is on the carry there for Scarlett. He'll be brought down for a couple of yard gain. Peoples is a black stripe. He's not on the active roster, but he's doing looking pretty good today. At least I think he's looking good. The coach is chewing him out right now. Going to be third and three. For Scarlett, as saying he's looked okay. He's definitely a freshman. He's thrown a pick, but he's also made some pretty good throws. So kind of so-so there. I'd say he would be a solid number two if Devin Brown doesn't mature. And that's going to be a run up the gut for a first down. Uh, looks like Caffey was on the carry there for Ohio State's Scarlett team. And we're approaching eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Uh, I need to adjust the timeouts again, I realized. What kind of half-ass operation are we running here? Jesus Christ. It's like I barely know what I'm doing. All right. First down, first Scarlet. Saying in a quarterback right now. See what he can do here. Snap, looking to throw. It is caught by number 89. He's going to make it all the way down to about the 19-yard line where he's ran out of bounds. Um, what is his name? Uh, Akmeric? Kakmerick, Kakmerick, trying to figure that out. I can't his name. Kakmerick. We'll go with Kakmerick for now. If I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Snap. Looking to throw again. Is saying he will do so. It is caught again by Kakmerick for another first down. And uh, now we got seven and a half to go. Scarlet's starting to drive. Saying's putting together a really good drive here for Ohio State Scarlet team. Uh, really good, solid throws. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too risky. Keeping it nice and safe. But, yeah, Saiyan's an interception. That really was a fucking ugly thing. First and goal for Scarlett. Uh, do you think Virginia Tech and Oklahoma State could be dark horses next year? Man. I don't know. I'm going to marry on that for a second. <laughs> I, that's a great question. I have no idea. And uh, we're going to get some a pause in the action here so I can actually marinate on that. Oklahoma State is uh, going to be playing in the Big 12. Big 12 just lost Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, it's going to be a timeout for Scarlett. Now, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that just because Oklahoma State it doesn't have to worry about those two teams anymore that they are going to be good. They did look – they looked really good up until the Big 12 championship against Texas. That said um, – you do guys contend with Utah coming in. Colorado is still on the rise. Who knows what the fuck they're going to be doing this season. I mean, Colorado is – I know they've been trying to recruit heavily. They're not getting as much hype going into this season as last season because they're probably 4-8. Four and, four and eight, But, I mean, they can still be a threat. 
I think Prime could probably do something with them. At least make an upset. <sighs> you think they still have Ollie Gordon? Yeah, I mean, if they have most of their guys returning next season, I think they'll win the Big 12. And there's a run up the middle by Peoples, and they are going to push the pile all the way into the end zone. Is that going to be a touchdown? Are they calling that a touchdown or not? And that's going to be a touchdown. Touchdown by James Peoples. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Who can stop me? Tell me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah. Woo! So just pushing the pile all the way into the end zone there. That's going to bring the game into within one point for Scarlett. Snap good. Kick is up. Down the pipe. Extra points good. Colorado's defense is the biggest question going into this season. That defense was asked late into the season when they lack it with the lack of depth was really showing. Yeah, I agree. The lack of depth really hurt them. Um, considering that they had all like they had, I think the entire if I remember correctly, the entire roster either transferred out or quit. And Prime just brought in whoever the hell he wanted. And we saw what the side effects are. And their O-line sucks. Their O-line just needs more seasoning, man. Their O-line just needs more seasoning, needs more experience. I think last season they got a lot of experience, so they'll, they'll probably go bowling this year. I can see them definitely going bowling. <coughs> All right, Scarlett's going to retain possession as we go first and 10 here, and it's going to be handed off to Williams Dixon up the gut. They'll gain it all the way out to about the 44-yard line. And that is going to be second down for Scarlett. Um, I think they're just keeping the ball with Scarlett just because the Grays have been so damn dominant on defense today. Aaron Nolan, freshman quarterback in for Ohio State on Scarlett. First time we're getting a look at him today. And he fakes the handoff so good the cameraman's following him. Or the cameraman followed the wrong guy on the play action. And black stripe Aaron Nolan picks up a pretty good play there. Oh, who are you? Oh, wow. How do I block this son of a bitch? <laughs> wow. I can't. Okay. Nope. Well, uh, heathen, go fuck yourself. Not interested. First and ten. Snap. Looking to, looking to run up the gut. They will. And that'll be uh, that'll a good three to four yard carry there. I cannot believe who the fuck is this guy. Hang on. I'm going to go and uh, I can't block him from here. Fuck. God damn it, stream yard. So wait, I can put people in timeout on YouTube, but if somebody on Twitch just bot spams me, I can't fucking do anything about it. God, that's bullshit. Second and seven. Uh, no one's going to throw it just outside of the intended target. Going to be incomplete. Third and seven. So I can start just getting raided at any time on Twitch, and I'm not going to be able to do a damn thing. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. I might suck sweet. I just might, I just might not stream Twitch anymore. I don't know. Third and seven. Aaron Nolan still in the quarterback for Ohio State. What a name. Aaron Nolan. Third and seven, he's gonna chuck it for the line. That's gonna be caught by number fourteen, Bruce Scarlett. That's gonna be a first down. All right, first and ten. Ball's on the 20, uh, 26 yard line for Scarlett. Aaron Nolan trips while he's handing the ball off. You definitely see the freshman in him there. Somebody say something in the chat. I want to get this fucking Twitch bot off my screen, please. <laughs> so the one thing that pisses me off more than anything is when a bot shows up to my fucking live stream trying to promote some bullshit just because I'm a small streamer. Go fuck yourself. I'm not interested. No fucking bots allowed. Second and six. Hand off up the middle. So Williams Dixon, he's got a whole... Go all the way to the end zone. That's a touchdown for Scarlett. What a run. 
by w Sam Williams Dixon. Yeah, Woo! Who can stop me? Tell me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah! Woo! Run. A great defense is starting to crack a little bit now as we get played into the third. Williams Dixon, he's done pretty well today. We've already seen what he does on Saturdays in the, in the fall. Kick up, and the extra point is good. First time Scarlet's led all day. 27-20 for Scarlet. And I think now they're going to switch sides. Finally. Unless they just want Scarlet to mow, mow on down the, uh, the grays here. Why do I even have this goddamn ear I don't have anybody else in the street with me. I guess I just have it. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for getting all pissy on you guys. Uh, I just hate it when bots show up on Twitch. Fucking annoys the shit out of me. Sucks that after our spring games, we have to wait like three months for another taste of live college football. I agree, and it's not three months. It's like four and a half. But... We got the UFL, so we have that going for us as well if you want some football. Uh, I know it's not college, but the UFL had some really, really good games last week. It, I couldn't – I was still recovering from illness and trying to work on the video, the, the college football championship video. So I didn't – I was going to stream the Battle Hawks game. Didn't get a chance to do it. Going to do it tomorrow with the Battle Hawks and the Brahmas. As that's thrown and incomplete, intended for Rodgers, number 13, but just couldn't – contain himself and hang on to the ball. Now we got Jeff Okuda on the field doing an interview. Good to see Okuda out there. Plays for the Lions, I believe now. Yeah, we'll get we got some football going right now for the UFL. We'll be back tomorrow for Brahmas versus Battlehawks at three if uh you're interested in that. <clears throat> Four minutes to go. Keen Holtz is back in that quarterback for Scarlet. Pass is completed out to the outside. He's going to make it all the way down to the 40. That's number 15 on the reception there. And again, guys, that's Denzel Ward. Oh, man, that's that goes back about a good eight years. Former Ohio State cornerback Denzel Ward. Doing interviews on the sideline. Everyone's just talking him up, chumming up, and you know, it's a pretty casual stream today. Obviously, there's no stakes in this other than the players just trying to make a spot, roster spot. Third and five for Keen Holtz. He's going to rush out of the pocket again. Running for his life. Throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. Keen Holtz, uh, you need to go back into the uh, cooker for a little bit, buddy. You're uh, definitely a little too doughy still. I know it was like a true freshman coming into the Cotton Bowl when Devin Brown got hurt during that game. But, man, he needs a lot of work. He needs a lot of work. All right, let's see if they're going to just keep it up and just keep the gray defense out there. I don't think they're going to have a whole – I don't. I think gray is definitely more of the defensive side of the, of the game here. And gray is going to get three points for a three and out. So that will bring it up to 27-23 with about three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Again, don't ask me how the point system works. I'm just putting up the points. It's spring football. Nobody gives a shit if you're going to get butt hurt over – Oh, no, we don't get points in real full football. Why are we putting up points in spring? Fucking scrimmage, bro. All right, here we go. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go. Waiting for these two to stop fucking chumming up with uh, the legends. All right, we're back on the field now. Scarlet still has possession. They're going to hand it off again to Williams Dixon as he's going to make a good run right there all the way down to the 48-yard line. Great run by Williams Dixon. Really, really that put himself a... A lot of good tape on today. Williams Dixon. God damn, Sam Williams Dixon. Hell of a name. And a hell of a player. Doing really good. Julian Sands back on the field. I guess Will Howard's day is done. We haven't seen him since the first quarter or second quarter. Uh, Sand, low snap. Hands off to Dixon, and he gets eaten up by the turf monster. And he's second and 12 for Scarlet. And we have two quarterbacks on the field. We got Sane and we got 
Mags. Who the fuck is Mags? Who the fuck is this guy? I'm sorry, a longtime Buckeye fan. They don't look good. Well, I'll explain to you here in a second. Let's look again. They do run a wildcat formation, hand off the Mags. I don't know what they're trying to do with Mags here. Are they trying to convert him into a running back or what? Not a national championship team. Um, Elric, here's the thing. This is spring. We're just trying to figure out right now what the roster is going to look like. I can tell you right now that Agbuka is going to be fucking phenomenal next season. I can tell you Will Howard looks like he's fitting in pretty well. He hasn't made any mistakes today for quarterback for Ohio State. As going to throw it, try to thread the needle, incomplete. Receiver looking for a flag, not going to get it. It's going to be fourth down. It's going to be another three points for Team Gray, thanks to the three and out. Oh, man, Buckeye royalty really is in the house today. you got Zeke Elliott on the sideline repping Ohio State. Nearly 4,000 career rushing yards, third most time on third um, in all time rushing yards at Ohio State. Fucking legend of the 2014 national championship run. So there you go. Fourth and five for uh, Scarlett. Are they going to do something? I guess they're going to practice punting. I don't know. Um, but Elric, to answer your question, man, I don't know what they're looking like. We're not going to know probably until we get a lot closer to the start of the season. But with the 12-team playoff, they're definitely going to be in the hunt. They're definitely not going to – Michigan's not going to keep them out of the playoff this year, hopefully. They're full-on rebuilding now after their national championship run, so that's good. We'll probably get a win this year at least. Will they win the national title? I don't know. Alabama's pretty much out of contention, I think, because they're probably going to go 9-3, and 8-4 and four under the new head coach. Georgia's probably reloading. They'll be dangerous, but I don't know. Uh, looks like Keenholz is back to throw, and it's going to be incomplete. And Elric, I'll answer your question real quick. The quarterbacks you've seen are backups. Will Howard's clearly QB one, and when Will Howard played earlier in this scrimmage, he looked great, looked really good. He'll be the starter. Devin Brown, Keenholz, Julian Sand, Air Nolan, who's a black stripe currently, they're not starting game one, buddy. Will Howard's clearly going to be our starter, and he looked pretty good in this game. He has a he has a has some run point. Um, Keen Holtz running out of the pocket, trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit, and uh, he will get about two about two yards away from the first down on the third and seven. So it's going to be fourth and two, and that's another three and out for Scarlet as we keep it going. You're right, Michigan won't kick them out. USC might. Buddy, they just lost their fucking golden goose and Caleb Williams. I don't know what the fuck they're going to be looking like. I'm more worried about Oregon out of the West Coast teams than I am about USC. Because Oregon did just get that uh, one quarterback from uh, Oklahoma. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he transferred from UCF, went to or Oklahoma. Now he's transferring from Oklahoma to Oregon. He, looked, he played really goddamn good for Oklahoma last season, so... His name escapes me at the moment. If, if you want to remind me in the chat, please do so. I'm awful with names. Uh, they're going to give another few points there to Gray for that stop. Uh, uh, Dylan Gabriel, thank you. Dylan Gabriel, thank you, Chelsea. Appreciate that. He looked great at Oklahoma. Um, he's been a little bit of a journeyman, but Oregon was able to nab him from the transfer portal. They're going to be dangerous as fuck. Will Howard's not entering the transfer portal again. He literally just transferred to Ohio State. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He's not leaving again. He's not. If he does, I'd be. I, I think the NCAA would make him sit uh, the next season for transferring twice. I don't know, but I don't think. I think that's against the rules. He's stuck here now, as there's going to be a uh, Aaron Nolan in that quarterback for Ohio State. Another run up the gut. Don't really get very far. Going to be third down for Scarlet. Yeah, our quarterbacks are pretty much locked in at this point. We might see a few other transfers for guys that didn't transfer during the transfer portal back in January. But the guys that already transferred can't transfer again. They're they're locked in. You get one freebie, and then you sit out if you transfer in the same season. Third and six for Scarlett. Aaron Noland, Black Stripe, not even on the starting roster in a quarterback. He's going to throw a dart, nice little pass to number 83. 
He's going to be caught, brought down to 49. Got to be a first down. And I think we just hit the end of the third quarter. It looks like we have. So, end of the third quarter going into the fourth. Team Scarlet, 27. Team Gray, 26. Close little scrimmage we got going here, folks. So, stick around. We got a running clock on all these quarters. So, we'll see what happens. Anyways, if you guys have any questions about what we're doing here, just comment uh, in the chat and I will answer them. Um, I'm feeling lukewarm about Ohio State, Elric, if that kind of you know brings up the bar. Like, it's not against the rules. He could transfer again before the season starts. Yeah, but where? Let me see. I'm, I'm curious now how valid that might be. Will Howard transfer? I'm not seeing any news updates that Will Howard's looking to transfer again. So, yeah, even if he is looking to – even if he wanted to transfer again, I don't see why he would. He's going to be the starter. The only way I can see him transferring again is if uh, Devin Brown or Julian Sam beats him. And based on what I'm seeing in the spring game, they're not going to pass him up at QB1. And Will Howard was really good at Kansas State last season. Like, really goddamn good. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I don't see it, man. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. What group of five team makes the automatic, If you, in your opinion? That is a really good question. And uh, that's going to require me to look up uh, a couple of things. I haven't really been able to really take a chance to um, dig deep into the preseason things because I'm deep in trying to get my next video out still. Um. I would have said SMU if they aren't re or weren't already going to the a ACC. I'll say that much. It's going to be interesting to see here. Uh, group of let me see what I find on my research here. So, according to CBS Sports, at least, they're projecting that Liberty – hang on a second, pause. That, that can't be right. No, that is right. So, according to CBS Sports, they're thinking that Liberty could advance and take the first uh, at-large bid for the group of five in the college football playoff. Do I think that'll happen? I don't know. Zach Smith said it on Friday. I don't know, dude. You're, you're. I. It's something I. I have absolutely no idea about Elric. And quite frankly, if he was considering transferring, I don't think he'd be out there playing. Like, if that was something that was really gonna fucking happen, the next transfer portal doesn't open up until mid-May, so he's gonna be sitting on his ass at home for the next month and a half, waiting to transfer again. If you're looking to transfer out of Ohio State, they don't put you on the fucking field. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, Scarlett's got the ball. Looking to run again. They throw the ball again. Looks like Aaron Nolan's back on the field. And I'll be completed to Shram. Going to be a second now. I mean, Elric, uh, feel free to uh, point me in that direction for news about where uh, Will Howard could be transferring, but – I just did a quick Google search, and I'm not finding anything in the news section about any sort of transfer rumors. If Will Howard was really considering transferring, that would be big fucking news. And Aaron Olin's going to be scrambling outside, trying to pick up something. He's going to get the first down, but that much else. Now, that'd be really goddamn like earth-shadowing news for Ohio State, because then we're going to be stuck with dealing with Devin Brown or fucking 
Um, Julian Sand, a freshman quarterback, and Julian Sand playing to start for Ohio State, we'd be fucked. That that's not something you you don't just throw around and nobody talks about. We lose Will Howard to transfer portal shit. We're fucked. All right, uh, snap, looking to hand it off up the middle to Williams Dixon. He'll be brought down behind the line for a, a loss. Going to be second down for Scarlett. They are inside gray territory here. Gray has been looking really, really good on defense. I think South Florida could have a chance. They have a pretty easy schedule outside of playing Alabama week two. In the home and home series, yeah. And, like, one other team I forgot, though, but I said USF was going to be good last season and was wrong. <sighs> It's a toss-up. Liberty definitely retained the most out of uh, – in terms of, like, roster during this offseason. They didn't really get poached by the transfer portal. Too bad. If James Masson didn't get poached, I'd say they'd probably be a, oh, they'd probably be a dark horse for it. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Liberty makes sense, but I also can see literally anybody – the fact that the group of five team is guaranteed to make the playoffs, though, is pretty cool. At the end of the day, we can all agree. That's pretty good. We have a potential Cinderella. Aaron Olin back in quarterback for Scarlet. He's going to throw that bitch deep, and that is incomplete. And there's a flag. Pass interference. Blatant pass interference on Griffin, number 43, for the Grays. Ball intended for Mitchell on the throw. Uh, yeah, 43 just didn't turn his head, hands all over him, didn't even make an attempt to try to stop it. Well, they lost their head coach and a lot of their players got poached due to transfer, so I don't think we're going to see them in contention again. Nolan looked pretty good. I agree, he has looked pretty good. Uh, he's a black stripe currently, not on the main starting roster. He's not on the game day roster yet. Um, I could see him maybe getting promoted, but that would also mean demoting one of the other quarterbacks. And in this day and age, you're probably not going to have that happen. First to go for Ohio State's uh, Scarlet side. They're going to hand the ball up the middle, and they'll make it out to about the four or three yard line. Second to go. Coming up on eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter here in this spring game. Hard to believe it's only been an hour and a half. This has been a pretty quick exhibition year for Ohio State. Second and goal here. Nolan uh, under center here for uh, the Scarlet. Thought one of the linemen flinched there. and Could have been a false start, but whatever. And off up the middle. That is a touchdown. Touchdown for Scarlet. T.C. Caffey. With the rock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Woo! Who can stop me? Stop me! Who can stop me? What? Yeah! Woo! So, Scarlet taking a little bit more of a commanding lead here over Gray. We come about seven and a half to go in the fourth. Still waiting on the extra point, though. Aaron, Aaron Nolan surprised me a little bit. Uh, Williams Dixon's also surprised me a little bit. He's looking really goddamn good. Here's the former retired athletic director for Ohio State, Gene Smith. I think he retired recently. Are we kicking the extra point or are we just saying fuck it? What are we doing? Because we're just focused on Gene Smith and Urban Meyer. Um, kissing each other over here. Like, what are we doing? Also, that press box looks like shit. There's open roof panels and rust and everything up there. Like, what the fuck are we looking at? Okay, no extra point attempt, I guess. I don't I don't know what to tell you there. Oh, I guess they did make the extra point. They just didn't show it on TV, you bastards. Oh, deep pass just out of reach. Oh, what the fuck, Adolph? You could have caught that. Also, really unfortunate that we got a dude named Adolph playing for Ohio State. Think of that what you will. <laughs> Thrown by Julian saying just overthrows the target, I guess. He could have caught it, just didn't want to, I guess. As we got just under seven to go in the fourth, second and ten here for Scarlet. 
And again, saying he's thrown a pick, but other than that, I mean, he's a freshman. He's just now getting his first real reps of a college football like game. You know, he's looking okay. He needs some work. He'll get plenty of work. So that pass is complete to the outside, caught by number seven. Uh, that is Gray's the second with the reception. Gray's junior, Gray's the second with the reception there. So it'll be third and short for Scarlett. Third and two to be exact. As the uh, Buckeye faithful, some of the Buckeye faithful appear to start to uh, say, you know what, we're going to try to beat the traffic. <laughs> Snap, we're up the middle. That is uh, going to continue to go. That's Peoples on the carry. He's making a bunch of guys miss, and he's going to be wrestled down at the 43. Black Stripe Peoples with the carry. Looked pretty good, too. He's also surprised me at how good he looks. I want to see him on Saturdays. Go on, Ryan Day. Start the son of a bitch. He looks good. Probably smells old in there too well. It is the horseshoe. It has been around for about 100 years. Uh, around the gut again for Peoples. He actually makes it to the outside. He'll gain about four on the play. Uh, I mean, the horseshoe's timeless. But you got to keep up with the times. So it probably needs another Ranger renovation again here soon, but that's fine. Keep keep the keep up the renovations. I'll have to see. You definitely get the funds for it. If they ever try to replace the horseshoe, they would fucking riot. They ain't they ain't changing that shit up. Major renovation, sure. Replacement, no. Saying he's going to be called for a sack as the line just could not contain the pressure. That's going to be a big loss there for Scarlett. So we're looking at about 450 to go now as we're going to come up on a long third down. Cano, Cano on the sack, number 93, on the big offensive line, big boys up front, the big defensive line, I should say. Got back there and was able to get credit for it. So it's going to be another two points for Gray. Third down, saying trying to make something, and he's going to be called for another sack. Jesus Christ. That offensive line that they got out there definitely isn't first string, I hope. So, going to be fourth down, and uh, I guess they admit defeat, maybe? I don't know. Chelsea, to go back to your point earlier, like as long as it doesn't smell like old piss and hot dogs, I think we're doing okay. If it's got like a smell like you just stepped into your grandmother's house, I mean, your grandmother's house probably smelled nice. <laughs> if that's what it smells like in the horseshoe, that's great. I've never actually been to a Buckeye game at the horseshoe, so I don't know. I would love to go to one this season if I'm able, but I don't know if I will. All right, they're going to start over. First down on the 35-yard line for Scarlett's. Aaron Nolan's back in the game at quarterback. Going to hand it off to Williams Dixon, and he'll get about four yards on the carry. As we approach three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, as we're getting close to wrapping up, putting a bow on this spring game here, folks. And it's been a pretty good one. I've been very entertained by what I've been seeing. There's a lot of good things, some bad things. But all told, I mean, it's a good – it's been a pretty good spring football game. For a scrimmage, you can't get much better than this. Williams Dixon, by the way, 11 rushes for 75 yards and a touchdown. Pretty good effort by him today. Got some good tape on film. Aaron Nolan uh, handed off. But, oh, he fakes the handoff. He's still running. He's up top. Come on, cameraman, do your fucking job. Makes it all the way out to the 50-yard line. For the first down. Clock's going to stop. Uh, no, it's not. They're going to keep running it. It's true. I used to volunteer at retirement homes that my mom worked at, so my memories from a smell point of view. So uh, you have meh memories from a smell point of view. Okay, well, retirement home is not the same thing as grandma's house. I think we all can agree there. And that's all I'm going to say there. Uh, let's see, another handoff to Williams Dixon. Nope, faked it. Dumps it over the middle, number 46. They're going to be bringing him down at about the 32-yard line. There you go. First and 10 for Scarlett as we approach two minutes to go in the fourth. And, again, this is a running clock, so once that clock hits two minutes, unless they go out of bounds, that's it. 
See if Scarlett can get another touchdown in. Aaron Nolan, maybe get some more tape. Williams Dixon, maybe get some more good tape. Maybe one of these receivers can get the ball. Who knows? First and 10 at the 33. They're going to hand it off again to Williams Dixon. Nope, Aaron Nolan keeps it again. Again, fooling the cameraman. Doing pretty good about that fake play, uh, handoff. Uh, yeah, they're going to run. I think they're going to just run this down all the way until, you know, the end of this thing, and then uh, they're going to get off the field and call it a day. I mean, these scrimmages are pretty much like, all right, you got two hours. We're going to get two hours of football in and call it a day. This is not a real game, so you don't want anybody getting hurt. Saying throw incomplete. You guys are getting rushed on the corner blitz there, and uh, they're still running the clock. So uh, next Saturday, Fox will also broadcast the Michigan spring game. We're going to cover a spring game next Saturday, and we're also going to cover UFL football action as well. Uh, I put a poll in the communities tab. In the community tab, vote on which game you want me to cover because Michigan's at noon. Notre Dame spring game is at one. Uh, Florida State plays that day, and so does Texas. Although I don't know if I have a Longhorn Network, so if Texas wins, that might be a problem. Third and four, Sands going to dump it off to the outside to Peoples. Peoples trying to make a play, big run, brought down at the fifteen yard line. And uh, let's see here what they're going to do. We've got twenty seconds to go in this spring game. Well, I mean, it's all part of the game, Chelsea. Low tackles happen. 15, 14, probably the last game of the game, probably the last play of the game. People's going to get another chance to run. He'll be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And they're calling timeout. Seven seconds to go. They are calling a timeout. So... Seven seconds left. We're definitely not going over time here. Damn it. We, they got one timeout. No, no, it doesn't fucking matter. Oh, Cardell Jones over here. Flexing. 12-gauge Cardell Jones from the National Championship squad that year. Yeah, that's a good memory. That team was great. The 2015 Buckeyes, that national championship Buckeyes, that was just fucking great. God, that, that, all, that, that first playoff was something else, man. That was a roller coaster ride from hell. Final play of the spring game. Looks like Saiyan's going to finish this one off for us. Second and 12. Final play here. Looking to throw. Maybe I don't know who that is at quarterback, actually. He's just going to say, fuck it and chuck it. Intercepted. By the Grays, and he's gonna take that some bitch all the way back. He's going all the way back, and the Grays are following him. The whole team is following him all the way back, and that's gonna be a touchdown. Pick six, pick six for the Grays. Yeah, you want this ball? You want to take it from me? Take it from me, baby. It's mine. What a way to finish that spring game. <laughs> Just the chaotic rush. Oh, wait, we ain't done yet, are we? I don't know what we're doing. It's, now they got 30 minutes up on the fourth quarter clock, so what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> well, there you go. Unless they decide to do something else, which I don't think they are. I think we're calling that right there, but let's see what they do. Yeah, it looks like that, that's it, that, that they're calling it. Let me take a look. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so with that pick six, I got to make a custom graphic still. I'm going to spend a couple hours today getting some new bells and whistles added in for the UFL game kicking off tomorrow. But, wow, great finish to the spring game there. As Scarlet narrowly defeats Gray 34-33 in the Ohio State spring game, our first Ohio State game we've covered on this channel since the Cotton Bowl. A um, couple of thoughts. Uh, Williams Dixon, really solid. Really, really solid running back for Ohio State. I could see him doing really well on Saturdays. Uh, you got a lot of – you had Will Howard playing for a few quarters there, but – they obviously have him dialed in as QB1, so 
Don't want to risk any injuries. Not going to get too crazy. Totally good. Totally good. Um, the backups, they don't look bad. Uh, Sam looked pretty decent. Uh, Devin Brown looked okay. Uh, they kind of sat him in the second half, and they really rotated in the second half between uh, Aaron Nolan, who is a black stripe, not even on the starting game day roster yet, uh, Devin, uh, not Devin Brown, uh, Keen Holtz, and Julian Salen, who all are either true freshmen or sophomores or redshirt freshmen that are going to need a lot more seasoning coming in. So that said, uh, out of those three, uh, Aaron Nolan looked pretty goddamn good. Uh, I think Saiyan's obviously going to be the quarterback of the future for Ohio State uh, just because of how well-touted he is um, with uh, coming in from a uh, transfer from Alabama commit. But I would not be shocked if Aaron Nolan got a little bit more playing time as uh, we – uh, go into football season in August. Uh, so, again, we're wrapping up in Columbus as Scarlet's defeated Gray in the spring game. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the uh, spring practices for Ohio State for now until we get to uh, summer workouts and then uh, training camp before the season starts in the fall. Uh, the first game for Ohio State is going to be against Akron, so we'll be covering that live when that comes around. Yeah, Western Michigan, Marshall, Michigan State. At, they're going to be on the road to start the Big Ten slate against Michigan State. They'll be at home against Iowa. On the road against Oregon. That's going to be a big fucking game. Home against Nebraska. On the road against Penn State, which is going to be tough as usual. Purdue, Northwestern, Indiana. And then the big bad boy, the bastards up north, Michigan, will be the capper on week 14. Um the games that worry me the most are going to be Oregon and Penn State because Penn State's always a pain in the ass for Ohio State. But Oregon, again, they got Dylan Gabriel transferring from Oklahoma, so they didn't have to reload too much during the offseason. They're going to be really goddamn dangerous. That could determine who goes to the Big Ten championship game, frankly, that game against Oregon um, in October. Uh, I'm looking forward to that rivalry for Big Ten playoff or for Big Ten football. That's going to be – Really, 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 really good, I think. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple of uh, things we're going to get out of the way here before we wrap this one up. First off, again, we will be back tomorrow with UFL coverage. We'll be doing the St. Louis Battle Hawks against the uh, San Antonio Brahmas live from the Alamo Dome. We'll be covering that one. It's going to be a good one. Uh St. Louis is one one and Brahmas are 2-0, and and they've been kind of the cardiac cats of the UFL as of late. So, going to be a good one. Um, next week, we will be back for another spring football game. Uh, again, go to the community tab on my YouTube page and uh, vote which game you guys want to see. Uh, we got Michigan, Notre Dame, Florida State, Texas. All of them are going to be playing around the same time, so I can only really cover one. Uh, let me know which one you want to pick. Even if you pick Michigan, we'll still cover it. Even though I would hate it, we'll still cover it. Um, based on the fact that these games go maybe two hours, we might try and double up the streams. Uh, actually, I'm curious here because we just wrapped up coverage, but is there another game on right now? Because that actually went a lot quicker than I was expecting it to. So let me see if there's another spring game on right now. No. DC and Arlington just kicked off, but don't think we – no, they're, they're deep into the game at this point. I'm not going to start a new stream just for that. Um, currently 14-3 to 3 DC in that game. Jesus Christ, DC, what the fuck? And then I want to see, is there any other spring games on right now? Uh, you got the pit. Blue Gold Spring game happening here in just a moment. Actually, it's already underway. All right. <laughs> we got Pitt playing right now. I don't give a shit about Pitt, and I don't think anybody else does. But it's always nice to watch them play on a, fo on a fucking football field that's not looking like shit. You know, because Aquasher sure Stadium, you always, that field's almost always torn up. I don't know. You guys want to watch Pitt? We got some time to kill. Uh, 
Nah, I'm good. All right. Once again, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap this one up here. Final score from Columbus, Ohio State 34. Sorry, Scarlet 34, Gray 33. Finish with a pick six touchdown. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm very, very satisfied with what I saw there, Ohio State-wise. So we will be back tomorrow for UFL coverage between the Brahmins and the Battle Hawks. And uh, our next big video is still under production. Trying to have that out soon-ish. We'll see what happens there. But until then, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you all being here. I will catch you all later.